What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today we are talking about effect racks in Ableton. These can save you a ton of time and be super beneficial. So if you are ready, let's get right into this. Okay guys, so you're gonna be using effect racks when there's a certain set of plugins that you may use over and over again. So it's almost like saving your own presets. Freaking awesome. So let's say right here for my 808, I always put a tuner on it because I always do. I gotta make sure it's tuned to C. So I always have a tuner on it. Maybe there's a certain way that I like to EQ it every time or maybe I just wanna have an EQ there so it's already ready for me and I don't have to load it in separately. And maybe I have my favorite distortion plugin as well. All right guys, so what you're gonna do is you're first gonna select all of your different plugins. So what we're gonna do is hold down shift as we go ahead and select each of these. And once you have them all highlighted there, then you can go ahead and press Command G if you're on Mac or Control G if you're on Windows. And that's gonna go ahead and put them in an audio effect rack for you. So now you see we have an audio effect rack right here. And as you can see, everything's contained within it. So it makes it almost like one controlling unit. So it's a preset in a sense. And you have different controls here that you can play with. You can go ahead and map some macros. So if there's certain things, like maybe you wanna map the gain to one of these, you can go ahead and do that there by pressing the map. Okay, maybe we also wanna map the mix here as well. And maybe there's other settings that we wanna map. And then when you're done, you press map again. And now we can control the mix and we can control you know, the volume or the gain as well, just doing that. So you can map different things, which makes it totally useful. You can basically make your own plugin by using a bunch of different ones. You can also open this up right here, which is gonna let you do different chains. So you might wanna do two different layers. Let's say we control and click in here, we can create a new chain. And now we have two chains doing that. One of these chains you can see doesn't have all the plugins on it now, and the other one does. So let's say you want to play the 808 by itself and then you wanted another chain with just the distortion. So you could use one of them for the lows and one of them for the highs and the distortion. Or you could do one for the low, mids, and highs. But you can see, you can just add different chains like that and it makes multiple occurrences of that same variation. And if you wanted to go ahead and duplicate one, you could just right click and then go duplicate it as well. So now we have two chains with our different plugins on it, the tuner, the distortion, and the EQ, and then one of them by itself. So if you wanted to rename them, you can press Command R or Control R, and you can go ahead and rename these different things. So you could say like this one's wet, and this one's the dry signal, for instance. So as you can see, you have a lot of functionality over these different effects and presets that you can do right here to your audio effect rack and you can hide all that good stuff too so you can make it look real clean just by doing that you can add on more macros and different things like that by pressing this plus and minus sign if you want to add more to it and you're going super crazy with it and you can also make variations of your macros as well like let's say you want it to be one variation and you want another preset for a different variation you could do that as well by doing pressing this new button and making a variation of it and then once you're all said and done here and you're ready to save it, now we can go ahead and save this so that we can save time and just load it in right away. And what we're gonna do is press this little save button right here. Boom. What that's gonna do is if we look up here now, it's gonna save in our audio effects folder so we can give it whatever name we want. Let's say this is called 808 distortion preset. And then we press enter and now it's gonna save it right there for our 808 distortion preset but maybe there's a certain folder that we want to save it in. Maybe we don't want to have to go to the audio effects panel to load it in every time. Maybe there's a certain folder that we have all of our presets in. If that's the case, you can right click and you're going to say show in finder, which is going to be different on windows. It's going to be show in explorer, I believe. And it's actually going to show you where that file is located. So then you can go ahead and copy it and then you can find the folder on your desktop or wherever you want to save it and you can paste it in there so then that will house all of your different presets and effect racks that you just made. All right guys, so that's the quick and dirty way to go ahead and make your audio effect racks in Ableton and how you can save them, make your own presets so you can go through and save time when you're using those effects later on down the road. So I hope you guys liked that one and make sure to smash the like button on this video if you did and subscribe to the channel if you're new here because we're uploading videos like this every single day now that you're not gonna wanna miss out on. And besides that, guys, I'll be catching you all again in the next one. Peace out.